Good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? It's the first day in a while where we don't have an NFL draft primer video to go over, right? It's It's been a while. We've been consistently pumping out the draft primer content for several weeks. So we're going to switch gears a little bit. We've done a pretty good job covering a lot of the players the Seahawks might be interested in in this draft cycle. I feel like we've done about all that we reasonably can as I am just one man working. I don't have a whole squad of scouts who can uh, dig into hours of tape and report their findings to me, right? As far as a one-man channel goes, I feel like I've done about as much as I can. So, with that being said, let's turn the page a little bit and take a look at what some experts say. And when I say experts... I am kind of saying it sarcastically because who knows when it comes to the draft, right? Nobody knows. That's why it's fun. That's why so many people watch it. That's why it's so entertaining. But nevertheless, there are a lot of people who, in some capacity or another, put themselves out there as prognosticators, and they make mock drafts. I've made mock drafts in the past, just for fun. <clears throat> but there are some people, their life is doing mock drafts, at least a significant portion of it. And the next couple days, today and tomorrow, we're going to take some time to look at some of these professional mock drafts. Now, I'm not saying that these mock drafts have any more credibility than a amateur mock draft. I could put together a mock draft that ends up being better than some of these, right? And honestly, my brother, who doesn't even really watch football that much, might be able to put together a better mock draft than I do, who watches football every, almost every game. So I think that it's important to note that this isn't necessarily indicative of anything. Once you get past the first few picks, anything goes. But it's interesting to see where these people think the Seahawks are going to go. Because if a lot of people think something... There's usually some reason why they think that, right? There's got to be some degree of cognitive understanding of, okay, this team needs this, they need that, they need to do this, they need to do that. So therefore, this is where they're going to go with their picks. Now, some of these mock drafts are going to be um, full mocks. Some of them are going to be partial, and some of them are only going to do the first round. So with that in mind, keep in mind that not all drafts are created equal, and let's take a look here. So, uh, this first one is from Field Goals, which is the SB Nation site for um, the Seahawks. So, I thought we'd start there. They do a full round, seven round mock, just focusing on the Seahawks. So, this is their most recent iteration. They're going to be doing one more before the draft gets here, and they've done like, I don't know, seven or eight already before this one. But... Uh, looking at their most recent one, let's uh, break this down. So we've got Thibodeau in the first round, which I would totally be cool with. Big Thibodeau fan. I think he would be a great, great solution to our pass rush woes from last year. Uh, round two, they have us double dipping with the Kenneth Walker the third and Perrion Winfrey. I like both players. I like Brees Hall more than Kenneth Walker the third. <clears throat> I would be... A little bit eh if we took Kenneth Walker III in the draft, I must admit. I wouldn't be mad, I wouldn't be upset, but I would just be like, eh. Perrion Winfrey, nice player from Oklahoma. I did talk about him a little bit as well. I don't know if he's a hybrid defense fit. That's something that will be determined with time. I do think he's a good player, though, so I don't really have an objection to picking him up. Maybe If we did get Perry on Winfrey, that might be an indication that the defense isn't going to be exactly what we're expecting right now. But again, we're switching defenses this offseason. It's not going to be what any of us really expect because who knows. Alante Taylor, cornerback from Tennessee. I scouted him a little bit, liked what I saw. I talked about him briefly in the cornerback video. Uh, round four was Luke Fortner, center out of Kentucky. I, I view him as being one of the better center prospects in this draft. I actually had him third behind um, Parham and, of course, Linderbaum. 
So if you could get him in round four, I think that's good. I, I think he has a chance to go round three, but round four seems reasonable as well. They also had uh, Derek Young, a receiver that has been a little bit of a hot uh, button topic in Seahawks fan uh, fan world lately because the team seems interested. I don't know if Derek Young really has done enough to earn a round five grade, but sometimes these guys come out of nowhere and just rocket up the draft boards and you got to spend what you got to spend if you want them. I can't terribly object to it. Uh, then you have uh, Dare Rosenthal and Vidarian Lowe as the... Um, Offensive tackles, the late round offensive tackles. My issue here, you've already got two low valued left. Ta uh, ta I'm sorry, tackles on your team in Kerhan and Stone. So if you're going to bring in more offensive tackle projects, what does that say about the current ones? Um, that that would be my question there. But this is a very nice uh, seven round mock draft. Um, we address our pass rush issue and give us a. Uh, uh, address our pass rush issue and get somebody who should pair with Daryl Taylor for the foreseeable future and give us a really dangerous edge combo. And we're also beefing up on the defensive line for what is presumably going to be a new defense. Um, we address the offensive line a little bit with the addition of a real center. Uh, Alante Taylor is nice enough. We hopefully add enough running back depth to maybe move on from uh, Chris Carson it's a pretty good seven-round mock. Okay, uh, the next seven-round mock we're going to look at is from The Athletic, from Dane Brugler. This was posted less than a week ago, and he does all 262 picks. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit here, actually. And obviously, we're just going to skip to the Seattle picks because a lot of this stuff, it's interesting, but it's not the most compelling thing in the world right now. So, Let's just jump around from Seahawks pick to Seahawks pick and uh, see how uh, the Athletics sees it. So they, in the first round, have given us Derek Stingley Jr., which at this point, I'm cool with that. I'm totally cool with Derek Stingley. He had a great pro day, and I think that pro day has kind of pushed me over the edge with him. I'm, I would be happy to get him. I still think I prefer Sauce, but I could be talked out of it, I think. Um, okay, the next Seahawks pick is Matt Coral, quarterback from Ole Miss, which, I mean, I would be pretty tepid on that one. It, on the one hand, at least you didn't get him in the first round. On the other hand, I still don't like him that much. He's okay, but I'm not exactly optimistic about him becoming a franchise quarterback. And then they have us taking Bernard Ryman, the offensive tackle from Central Michigan, who I, I believe this is the guy who was the former tight end. I, I would get behind that. This is a little bit higher than I expected him to be, but he is a late riser, so it's believable. So I'm not a big fan of the Coral pick, but the Ryman pick would be pretty sweet. Uh, next pick in the third round, they have us getting Jamari Seiler. I'm sorry, I definitely butchered that. But, uh, excuse me, I don't know very much about uh, Jamari, but um, he's another offensive lineman. If we want to heavily address the offensive line position, I'm certainly not going to complain about that. Uh, fourth round, they got us taking Amari Barno, an edge from Virginia Tech, who um, I believe I briefly touched on him in my edge video. <clears throat> See, um, seems fine. Not exactly the most exciting edge for me. There are some guys that you could maybe get in this range that I would be more excited about, but addressing that position is not a bad idea. Donovan West, another offensive line pick. I don't know if you need more offensive linemen to that degree, but if you want to address it aggressively like that, then I'm all for that. Uh, they also have us getting a linebacker, Mike Rose. Um, we do have something of a need at interior linebacker, I think, so no objection to the position. I don't know very much about Mike Rose, though, admittedly, but positionally it seems reasonable to me. And I like the idea of utilizing a later round pick on that because it seems like that works out for teams a lot. And the final pick, they have us taking Amar Armani Rogers from Ohio. This is the uh, guy who played quarterback in college but projects to be a tight end in the NFL. I really hope we don't use a draft pick on a tight end. I, I If it's a seventh round pick, then whatever. But I believe there's a better use of that pick than a, um, a tight end who will probably never play and seems mostly to be a gadget player to me. So this mock was okay. 
I'm not a huge fan of it. I do like the fact that we're attacking the offensive line aggressively, but I'm not huge on the way they chose to do it. That being said, if we were going to do that, at least it would show a commitment to building the offensive line that we haven't had before, and that would be worth something. So maybe on that level, I can get behind it. All right, let's jump over to uh, CBS. And they did a seven-round mock draft, and they actually listed every pick for every team here, which is convenient. So let's just uh, take a look at this right here. So uh, first round, they have us getting Malik Willis, which I want to like it, but I don't. I like Malik Willis. I suspect he will be good, but you can't you you can't get me excited about spending a top 10 pick on a quarterback who is not a sure thing. I don't see any, but even his fans don't think he's a sure thing and may not be ready to play for at least a year, possibly two. <clears throat> so Malik Willis in the top 10, I just can't do it. I want to be able to do it. But I don't see him as a sure thing, and I really can't abide by him possibly not playing significantly until year three. Um, they give us Daniel Falele in the second round, which, I mean, that's my dude. So I'm going to get crazy about that. I, I love that. And they give us Tariq Woolen, who I did scout. I liked him. A lot of people are high on him in Seahawks land. I didn't think he was going to be a second round pick, but again, this is a late riser. These guys creep up the draft board, and before you know it, they're going 40, 50 picks higher than you thought. So if that's what it takes, that's what it takes, and I do like him. I do think he's going to be a good player in the NFL. Um, then you have uh, third round, my Jai Sanders, an edge from Cincinnati, who I'm not actually overly familiar with. I'm going to have to familiarize myself with him. Maybe Cincinnati produced a lot of interesting defensive prospects this uh, this draft for sure. But um, I do not know very much about Sanders at this point in time. But taking an edge at this point in the draft, certainly nothing wrong with that. Uh, Kyron Williams, this was the best, um, by my estimation, the best pass-blocking running back in the draft. So if you get him, you're mostly getting him to be a third down back. Catch passes on third down, pretty good at that. And maybe, more importantly, he's a great blocker. This gives you some ability to maybe move on from Travis Homer because he's going to be a free agent next year. So Kyron Williams, sure. Smoke Monday, safety from Auburn. I don't know much about him, but the fifth round is a decent range to start trying to take a um, a backup safety for Jamal. Uh, Thayer Munford from Ohio State, a guard. Don't really know too much about him. Um, guard is obviously not one of my higher priorities in this draft, but down here in the fifth round, it's totally fine. And then you have Cole Turner, tight end from Nevada. I I just can't imagine a tight end having any room on this, this roster. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So I don't get that. It's a seventh round pick, so whatever. But um, this draft, I like everything except for the Malik Willis thing. And even the Malik Willis thing, if we took him, I would be intrigued, right? Like, I wouldn't just be like, ugh, not this. I would be trepidatious but I would ultimately say, like, he is a quarterback. Uh, having the quarterback is really important. And I think he'll eventually be good. So I'm not going to get too down on it. But I'm, I, I just can't, I, I can't vouch for it. Okay, so then you have this mock draft from NFL.com. This is uh, Chad Reuter. And he does uh, four rounds. And uh, brace for impact on this one. Because I'm going to tell you this right now. He gets off to a very rough start for the Seahawks, in my estimation. So if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see that he has us trading up into the top four. Trading for the number four overall pick. Giving up their 2023 first round pick, which, by the way, projects to be high because we're probably not going to be good this year. And a fifth rounder this year, by the way. And... <sighs> Matt Coral. <laughs> Already commented on Matt Coral. Already said what I'm going to say about him. I don't hate him. He does do some things that are, I, I guess you could call it, appealing. But there just isn't enough for me to sink my teeth into. So if this happens, this is one of the worst case scenarios on draft day for me. Trading up to get Matt Coral. If we trade up to get Matt Coral, I'm, I'm going to be sad. Okay, now let's click on round two and see what he has. See if he can maybe bounce back. 
Maybe he can do a little bit better with our round two picks at least. I mean, we're here. We may as well take a look, right? Oh, sorry about that. Um, he has us picking Quay Walker, linebacker from Georgia, which, I mean, I, I like Quay Walker. I think he's good. It, I don't know if he's going to be a fit in what we're trying to do on defense, but obviously if we took him, then we would have some kind of plan for him, right? We would have some understanding of the fact that, hey, his skill set is this, this, and this. We obviously are planning to have a need for that kind of player in this uh, in this defense. So if that's the case, I like Quay Walker. I think he'll be good, so I'm not going to be upset about that. And then you have Tyler Smith, uh, Tulsa offensive tackle. Um, don't know a ton about Tyler Smith, to be perfectly honest. I know he's relatively young, which is always appealing, but I'm going to have to do a little more research into him if he really is creeping up the draft board to this degree. All right, uh, so we're not off to the best of starts here. Let's jump on over to round three here. We have one pick in round three, and he also gives us Amari Barno. So this is a guy I may have to take a look at between now and the draft because a couple of mock drafters have him going to us. And again, on the surface, I'm going to say what I say. Taking an edge in the fourth in in uh, the third round, if you haven't addressed it previously, absolutely. But when you take a look at some of the guys we could get in like the second round or the first round, maybe even the third round. I'm I'm sorry, I'm, our other second round pick, it, it's it's definitely not the same. And then they also had the fourth round here. Let's uh, go down and see. They gave us Dylan Parham. This is nice. Getting Dylan Parham in day three is something that would excite me. I see him as a day two pick. So getting him in day three, yeah. He is going to take some time to be able to play center, but we have time to kill. So if we got Dylan Parham, I would be for that. On the whole, didn't like this mock at all from, um, God, I'm sorry, what's his name? Uh, Reuter. But it's... It's got some interesting elements to it, I guess. I that That's the best way I can put it. Okay, more stuff from uh, NFL.com here. This is uh, Peter Schrager. He did another mock draft, and if you scroll down, it, it's just a one-round mock. He gives us Derek Stingley Jr. I've already sounded off on that. I, I, I think that would be a reasonable pick. I think Stingley has incredibly high potential. If we are going to play more man this year, it makes sense to get him. It makes sense to put him in a man defense. I think he has the potential with Carroll coaching him in this defense to be uh, a Jalen Ramsey type of cornerback. So I, I don't object to getting Derek Stingley at nine. I'm not super excited about it, but I'm moderately excited about it. So that is Schrager. Let's go see what Charles Davis thinks. He also did a one round mock and he is giving us Derek Stingley Jr., Okay, starting to notice a little bit of a trend here. A lot of these mocks are starting to send us Derek Stingley Jr. And um, if, if that's the way we go, then I'm going to at least be able to sit here and say we got a top 10 talent with a top 10 pick. Derek Stingley, to me, is clearly a top 10 talent in this draft. Whether or not the position is worth drafting high on, whether or not this particular player is going to be worth it with this coaching staff in place because Carroll's probably going to be here for a little while. Remains to be seen. But Stingley's a top 10 player in this draft in terms of ability. Okay, next up we have a mock draft from Lance Zerline of NFL.com and he he's jumping on the wagon. He's given us Derek Stingley Jr. And I've uh, said everything I can already say about him, so let's just move on. Just let it be known that he's not my favorite, but I can get behind it. Okay, let's go to Walter Football here. Let's see who they give the Seahawks at number nine. Okay, change up. We're getting Jermaine Johnson, defensive end from Florida State. And um, I don't like him as much as Thibodeau, but I do think he is an edge worthy of at least being a top 20 pick, probably at least top 16. So could you trade back a little bit and maybe get Jermaine Johnson? I guess. But if we get him at number nine, I'm going to be cool with that. I, I don't think he's a can't miss prospect, but I do think he's a good enough prospect to where I would feel very... Uh, well, okay, I'll say pretty good about getting at number nine. So this one round mock is fine by me. And then we've got one more one round mock here from PFF. And they give us Malik Willis, which, uh, I mean, look, 
I know some people like Malik. I know some people want to get him, but I just can't get there. I just can't get there. I'm not there yet. And I don't think I'm going to be able to before the draft. But that's it for this video. We spent a pretty good chunk of time going over some of these mocks. We're going to go over more tomorrow. I'm going to try to find some other good ones, other interesting ones, other ones with at least some degree of credibility, and just kind of break it down and see what people are thinking. So obviously, a lot of mock drafters gave us Derek Stingley. And we as um, Seahawks fans are going to have to form our take on that. But the fact that it's coming from a lot of different people does make you wonder if there is buzz that it's going to happen. Because it seems like he'll be available there. The pro day that he had seems to have given him credibility as a um, top 10 pick. And I don't know. I would be fine with it. But we also had a couple Malik Willis's. We had a couple Matt Corals. We had a Jermaine Johnson, a Thibodeau. Tomorrow we'll see what we can dig up with some of the other mocks. All right. I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Go Hawks. Let me know what you think.